Okay, so here's my uh, pannier idea for the Super Cub. Um, I have these Timbuk2 uh, bicycle panniers. They are waterproof for the most part. Uh, the outsides are definitely waterproof. Uh, it's a, a very good design. I mean, if you were in a serious downpour, yeah, I suppose water might get in there if you're splashing through giant puddles. But for the most part, this thing is waterproof. Um, the outside uh, TPU and canvas is really good. Um, anyway, these are from one of my uh, commuter bikes uh, that I use periodically. And how I'm going to do this is this center yoke between them is sized to specifically hold um, or to fit directly over the uh, rear rack of a bicycle. I don't have one out here at the moment, but uh, I'm going to cut this thing down the middle right through here. I'm going to have a sewing shop, you know, hem it up uh, on that uh, seam and I'm going to round that edge off and I'll put uh, either lacing or possibly just some heavy-duty velcro straps to where I can uh, link the two sides back together and I can do it at whatever width I choose so it's gonna fit over sorry I'm doing this one-handed here uh, it's gonna fit over this I've got some uh, mounts uh, traditional motorcycle pannier mounts for universal you know a standard Japanese bike kind of an arrangement and uh, it's gonna just give a side support that these will rest against and bingo bango done so that'll fit on top of the rack uh, the Honda accessory rack uh, and I'll be able to attach the uh, uh, velcro strap to the edge of that uh, pannier support and keep them from flapping about in the wind. And then up here, these just strap to the rack itself, uh, which is how they're made to be set up on uh, a bicycle. So yeah, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be a nice little arrangement for it. I think the color is good, uh, kind of a dark gray, almost a charcoal black. So that'll give it some carrying capacity without doing the milk crate thing, which, you know, the milk crate could be cool. And I could still put some kind of a box on top of that if I wanted to. Uh, just arrange how this would go maybe under the rack instead of over the top of the rack. And then on top of the rack have a box or some other kind of storage. But this would give me an area to uh, keep my uh, laptop and whatever else if I'm commuting about town. Uh, these things are big enough for groceries and whatever else. Uh, a mesh pocket. They've got various little organizers inside. Uh, kind of hard to see in the dark here. But... Uh, they're set up quite nicely. I like Timbuk too. I've got quite a bit of their gear uh, for bicycles and works out well. But this is waterproof uh, and I'll probably just get a padded sleeve for my laptop. Sleeve the laptop and throw it right in here in the, uh, the mesh compartment. Done. Nice little commuter bags. And it keeps the aesthetics of the bike pretty clean. Alright, well good uh, Monday evening all. I thought I'd revisit my uh, pannier uh, idea. I videoed this a few days ago uh, on what I had planned to do before I had the rear rack on here and I was just kind of draping the bags over the, the rack, but now it makes a little more sense because we can actually see it. Angle the camera down a little bit. I have this set of bicycle panniers that are waterproof for the most part. These are uh, a really nice uh, piece of kit from uh, Timbuk2. It's called their Tandem Pannier. And it's a set of panniers, and they have magnets embedded in the back of them, uh, disc magnets, pretty strong ones. And uh, when you take them off of your rack on your bicycle, you just lift them up, and if you get the, the gusset or the yoke here in the middle to fold upward, they just clip together and it becomes like a briefcase. It's really slick. And uh, the inners of them have... I don't know if you can see uh, if the lighting is sufficient, but they have lots of pockets uh, for organization, zip close pockets, uh, and everything for pens, keys, you name it. Uh, and then there's a mesh uh, divider here. Uh, so it's good for putting a laptop in there. I'll probably still get a you know, neoprene padded sleeve or something for the laptops. Um, it does come with a shoulder strap. Um, anyway, these things are waterproof uh, and the way that they close they're not really a roll top bag so they're not 100% waterproof but the way that that uh, 
gusset right here closes up, if I can get it centered, you're not going to get a lot of water in there. You might get a little bit of spray uh, if you are pretty careful about the way you close it. This thing is going to be good for, you know, light rain, no problem. Anyway, uh, to the Cub. Uh, a bicycle pannier rack is narrower than your traditional motorcycle seat or obviously the rack on the back of the Cub here. So my idea is I'm going to cut this guy down the middle just zip it right down the middle here and uh, roll this uh, the open seam over the open fabric over whatever uh, and just hem it up with some more material similar to this and then uh, probably place uh, heavy duty velcro straps in three or four positions across here so I can vary the width uh, these were I think $90 on sale on Amazon maybe 79 really reasonable full price they're only 119 or something like that uh, and you can't get motorcycle luggage for that price it's, it's always much more expensive and I think once the these are modified a little bit and they sit down flush on there it's gonna work quite nicely uh, I also have a set of uh, cruiser saddlebag supports it's a u-shaped uh, chrome you know, piece of metal here that you just install off of your shock bolt, and then I'll have to work on a little spacer here to get it uh, spaced out just the way I want, and just have it kind of going this way to prevent the bag from getting uh, into the tire area. But even then, it's just going to hit the fender. I don't want it rubbing my paint and scuffing it up over time. Uh, but when you put this on a, a bicycle pannier rack, it has uh, Velcro. Uh, straps that you just wrap right around the frame itself and it locks it tight and it's not going anywhere and then on the top the uh, these straps these velcro straps along the yoke are uh, designed to do exactly sorry camera should have angled, they're designed to do exactly that they just go right across the uh, the front rail of your rack and hold it on there so you're secured from the top and from the sides so if the back plays any it's not going to be much but the fitment the spacing everything on it, it it's almost like it was made for the bike it fits in here just right it kind of gets into the uh, the turn signals a bit the only thing that's the the miss is the width so I'm gonna solve that just do a little creative sewing take it to an alteration shop whatever I have to do because I don't know how to sew um, but I think that'll work really nice and clean it up a little bit and we'll look at it from the side oh i forgot yeah they've got more more waterproof pockets on the outside here so they're plenty usable very utilitarian so that's that i think that looks just fine and once that uh, that yoke is spread it'll rest down a little further right now it's it, you know they're kind of bowing up like this but they'll they'll sit down a little uh, more flat and they're angled a bit you can see the cut uh, to where it tilts them back to get them away from your wheel or you know on a bicycle it would be your you know your leg your your heel as you're pedaling but in this case it keeps it away from the shock so hey win-win clears the exhaust $80 set of motorcycle luggage or almost motorcycle luggage and if you really wanted to get creative, you could uh, even put a small tail bag right here across the middle or even a roll bag uh, lengthwise or sideways or something like that and give yourself a little bit more storage. But I think for my commuting duties, uh, I need to carry a laptop and a handful of uh, you know office productivity items with me everywhere I go to my customer sites. I think that'll work. And I could still use them on my bicycles when I go, uh, you know out on day rides or bike packing or whatever anyway so that's that uh, while I'm standing here I finished putting the uh, uh, the CRG lane splitters on here uh, this guy went on reasonably easy uh, I just had to dig it up I'll, I'll do the install video or show that install video uh, for how I got in here and hit the releases this one you can do it that one was much more of a booger um, <laughs> should probably put that in the other video but hey we're here I'll just do it while we're talking uh, this guy has much deeper indent 
uh, because of the th throttle tube right here. And the other wrinkle is that throttle tube is not going to flex. It's actually covering the detent in the handlebar that's holding that bar weight. So it was a little more of a challenge. Uh, the proper way to get it out, again, I don't have a shop manual, but I, I already know what the proper way is. You have to dismantle your entire throttle assembly. You have to remove your throttle cables, and you have to slide everything off. Uh, the throttle cables are a push-pull design, so you can't just pop one of them off. The only way you could do it is if you release them down here at the throttle body, and that's way more trouble than I was ready to go through to just put a mirror on there. So I, I continued with plan A, uh, like I did on that side, which was shoving a screwdriver in there, and I'll, I'll show all that in another video. There are two little ears that you can try to get a hold of from the outside edge, and I mangled them, broke one of the ears off, just beat on it, screamed, cussed for a good 15 minutes, and I finally got one side out and held it there fast with a screwdriver and contorted myself around, grabbed another screwdriver and just levered and torqued the hell out of it and finally got the top one to pop loose. And I, of course, I pretty much destroyed the little uh, locking assembly for that, but I don't care because I'm not using it. Um, anyway, so once you get those two little tabs released from the indents in the bars, the, the weight assembly will slide out and then you can put the uh, insert in there for your bar end mirror. So that's what I did. Uh, I left myself a, a nice little space there so I don't have any interference with the end of the grip on here and create drag on the throttle tube and works a treat. And these mirrors are just fantabulous if you've never seen them before. Uh, you set your ball tension with this screw, uh, your rotate tension with this one for the most part, uh, and you just get this pretty tight where it's not going to move on its own. but. Here's the, the great thing about the Lane Splitter series. Woohoo! It folds up, and there's a ball detent right there that you can see here. And when I extend it, you might, yeah, there's too much goop in the way. Anyway, there's a, uh, a spring loaded ball bearing right here in the base of the, uh, uh, the mirror arm, and it just pops into this position or that position. And it doesn't alter the angle of your mirror setting. You just flip it in if you need more space to filter through cars or in your garage if you don't want to bang into it as you're walking by it, whatever. You just fold them in and then when you fold it back, boink, pops right back to its preferred alignment. So they're just great. I love them. I've had these on other bikes in the past and with the trouble I had with those factory mirrors, I thought, you know, they got to go and I know exactly what's going to replace them. So anyway, I hope some of this was helpful for everybody. If uh, if anything was useful, leave a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll have plenty more uh, Cub videos and other Moto videos and the Riker sitting over there and the C3 and <laughs> all the other plethora of toys in the garage. That's why I never open it up because it's kind of a mess in there. Uh, anyway, thanks for tagging along, guys. Have a great night. All right, we're going to take some uh, measurements of this rack so we know kind of what space we're working with and uh, what's usable. I've got a... Uh, uh, fabric tape measure here with uh, imperial and metric on it for everybody that's uh, on both sides of the pond. <laughs> All right, so total perch size at the front edge is going to be eight and a half or right at 22 centimeters. Total perch at, let's start it kind of at the rear of that taper, is going to be seven and a quarter inches or Roughly 18 and a half centimeters. Oops, get off of there. Get off. Uh, front to back depth within the parcel area, not including the, the bar here, is going to be just a hair under nine inches, so about eight and seven eighths, and that would be right at 22 and a half centimeters. Okay. Boy, that thing wants to catch on everything. Um, height really doesn't matter because you know, we're just coming off of the bumper or the, uh, the fender here. Uh, it does have little bungee hooks, which is nice. I don't know how useful they're going to be overall. You'd have to have one really small bungee net because that's, that's not a very big size there. Uh, what I plan on putting on here, at least temporarily, are some uh, rock straps. Uh, those things are fantastic. Uh, I'll use the bike-sized ones 
a bicycle, I should say, uh, because they're much smaller and they can you know, cinch down to a smaller space without having so much slack. Um, what else? I think that's really all we need to know. I mean, if we want to see what that height is from the, uh, the bottom of the, the base there to the top of the little rail, if I can get it to cooperate with me. It is inch and three quarter, roughly. No, just a little over an inch and a half. And let's say an inch and a half. So that's uh, three and a half to four centimeters tall. That's not really an important measurement. Okay, so, and I'll I have to finish bleeping all of my swearing and cursing. Uh, <laughs> I was really PO'd at this when I put it on a couple nights ago. Uh, this ear right here was very bent. Uh, it was the welding jig that they used to produce it. It was way off. I mean, we're talking at least a quarter of an inch off, uh, inward and also tilted in at the leading edge to where it was biting into the plastic and there was just no way to make it fit, uh, without seriously beating it into submission, which is what I ended up doing, but not before it gouged. I don't know if you can see it. I need a brighter light, but it gouged my paint here and it took paint completely off all the way down to the base plastic beneath this uh this bracket i mean it just sheared it off scarred up the plastic pretty much ruined the fender if that were to come off of there you would see it it would be horrible so now that's permanently on the bike it's never going to come off unless i have something else to replace it that's going to cover up the boo-boo this part just just this cover is 371 dollars us ouch the plastics for my CB500F, when I rebuilt that thing, all the plastics, front cowls, uh, rear tail, rear cowl, everything, all of it put together was barely $370. It's kind of nuts. Anyway, so that's that. I'm going to probably put a little bit wider plate on here maybe if I end up doing a large roll bag. Otherwise, I'll find something that fits this without hanging over too far uh, unless it's got its own structural reinforcement. Um, even if I go further back this way, it'll have to have its own structural reinforcement so it doesn't end up, you know, drooping down and resting on the tail light. So this plate either needs to be clamped, you know, get something else on there, drill it, put something wider. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I think a, uh, a black vinyl or canvas, uh, roll bag, maybe no taller than about that and maybe no wider than about there uh, would be ideal. It, you know, it could probably come off the end a little bit, but yeah, just a chunky little roll bag, something big enough to hold my laptop, waterproof preferably. Um, and then of course the panniers uh, sold, done. Later.